Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Captain's Log, Subdates 22122.4. On the 22nd day of Moistmas, my whole crew gave to me 22 Zimbabwean pennies, a Rhodesian flag, and a pen made from oikery scrotum. I'm going to use the pen. The rest can go in the bin. Hello everyone, welcome back to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with Jake Paul, a trailblazing, boxing relevancy driving person type thing. Yeah. An insufferable dipshit who has a record of 6-0 after beating three MMA fighters, a former basketball player, and a YouTuber. Some of you might think when you hear that, but that's only five. One had a rematch. This in turn has driven an increase of interest in boxing. Many boxing purists don't like that YouTubers are getting involved. I couldn't disagree more. As a big boxing fan, my view on it is you are driving more people to either partake in it or to watch it which means many others will benefit from it. Even if it is someone like Jake Paul that should have lost in his very first when Deji had his chance. Now in the case of Jake Paul, I do have to cut him a small amount of slack. A boxer, Tommy Fury, brother of Tyson Fury, has had multiple opportunities to get in the ring with him and effectively end him. End this traveling circus that surrounds the man championing make boxing great again. It's a message I can get behind, perhaps if you weren't fronting it. In the case of Tommy Fury, a third and final opportunity has arisen, but that is not why Jake Paul is why we're doing this first. Technically, it's not Jake Paul I'm going to rail on next. Jake Paul was recently given a WBA belt for changing the boxing business model. Belts in boxing have become watered down of late, depending on where you are on the totem pole. If you have won multiple weights, world titles, chances are you don't care as much about the titles if you're still undefeated, because being undefeated means you can garner more money. If you're someone like Mayweather, your name sells anyway. A belt is irrelevant. If you are Canelo, a belt sells you, but you don't need it either. In the case of the WBA, they could give their belt to anyone. Their belt is worthless. They watered down their title years ago. Now, each governing body have introduced tiered belt systems. For example, the WBC have the international silver and then the world title. So as you go up their ranks, you get a chance to compete for one of those titles. Getting it will elevate you to the next level faster. The WBO have Europeans, Intercontinentals, Internationals, Interims. The WBA, well, we'll get to those in a sec. The IBF have also Europeans, Intercontinentals, Internationals. WBA have a title for everything. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's one titled the WBA Oikery Champion. So at the WBA convention in Florida, two-weight world champion Bernard Hopkins presented him with this belt. And credit to Jake Paul, he was reluctant to take it saying, I'm honored for real, this means a lot. I feel like I haven't earned this yet though. I feel like I have to actually fight for this. I don't know. Thank you. I feel like you guys should hold on to this till I'm actually fighting for a WBA championship. I don't know. Eventually, he accepted it. But I will admit, on the face of it, I'm with Jake Paul on this. That belt should be nowhere near him. Gilberto Mendoza, the president of the WBA, is trying to latch onto something the WWE do, where they give it to some people who do incredible things or teams that win championships. Here's a belt for you. Well done. Applause, everyone. Smeghead salute. The thing is, you represent one of the oldest, in fact, I think it is the oldest, governing body in boxing. Your title was one of the top two most prestigious. It is now fifth. And I say that as an opinion because I believe the WBC, IBF, WBO, and the IBO rank above you because of how watered down your title is. The champion makes the belt. That's what the IBA say, not the belt making the champion. In this, you have people who are considered champions that do not deserve to be it. The most noteworthy of which is Daniel Dubois, WBA regular champion. The only WBA heavyweight champion is Alexander Usyk. Dubois should not have a belt at all. And in this one aggravating instance, I'm actually feeling sorry for Jake Paul because he should not be made to accept a title he has not earned. 
as he correctly identified. He's still a twat, but in this, he's at least in the right. So moving on from that, let, let's, um, let's just throw life for free spirit in here because she tickles me to no end. I know some of y'all see me post my Starbucks every morning and some of y'all might think that it's a flex, but nah. It's because every time I post my Starbucks, another bitch dies mad. That drink is the pink drink from Starcucks. What is in it, you ask? It's a uh, strawberry acai refresher made with coconut milk. Um, it's not a frap. It is also considered the basic bitch teenager drink. High in caffeine, I believe, as well. So when NarcTube tweets, no one is dying mad, everyone over here is wondering why you continue to order it every single day when you're short on rent, electricity, and groceries. That's all. It's very simple. For life of free spirit, life hasn't been so good of late. It really hasn't. Maybe there are some aspects that are improving, but since she's put a lot of it out there in the public space and it hasn't looked good for her, which of course I would like to see improve, this weird flex dab on the haters is only making her more of a lol cow than she already is. And for somebody that built a career responding to lol cows, reacting to lol cows, to then become the very thing you grew off, that's not a good sign. Perhaps if you are so invested in your presence on social media, one would seek to produce better content and not dab on them haters? Is that it? I'm assuming that's what this is because I really don't get it. So a couple months ago, Henry Cavill stepped down as Geralt, Geralt, Jerry, let's call him that, in The Witcher, the adaptation from the books and the video games and all that stuff, something which he's very passionate about. There was some amusing criticism of him claiming that he was solely targeting going around women because he would change scenes on a whip. It had nothing to do with the fact that he's a gigantic nerd and he was very well read up on what it is it's supposed to be and where you were deviating from the source material. So after three seasons as Jerry in The Witcher, he stepped away and the reason why is because he'd filmed a cameo in Black Adam, a DC movie fronted by Dwayne The Johnson Rock. That cameo got a lot of attention and led many of us to believe A Man of Steel 2 was going to happen, something which we've waited nine years for. It would have been longer than that if they actually greenlit it. I have a strange feeling Henry Cavill himself was led to believe another Man of Steel was going to happen. And it makes sense. He's a good Superman, a fantastic successor to Christopher Reeves. But new executives in charge of DC Studios, James Gunn and Peter Safran, well, they decided that many of them are not getting sequels, trilogies, or anything really. One of those is Henry Cavill, who announced via Instagram, I have just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's sad news everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October, prior to their hire, this news isn't the easiest. But that is life, which also means that any cameo appearances in future projects, including The Flash, for both Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot are shelved. It is believed that there will be no future Aquaman movies after The Lost Kingdom. We're not sure what's happening with Ezra Miller's Flash. There's unlikely to be any follow-up to Black Adam because its profit margin wasn't that large. And at the same time, if James Gunn and Peter Safran want to take it a certain way, a reboot has to happen for the story to really develop. A reboot of a reboot of a reboot of a reboot. How exciting, everyone. Henry Cavill gave up The Witcher, a role he was very good for, suited for, excited for, 100%. He gave up something that, while I'll accept the third season, tumultuous relationship wasn't going so well, the story deviated a little, it was still something he did really well and he excelled at. He gave it up under the pretense he'd be going back. This is akin to George Lucas penning a story for the more recent trilogy of Star Wars movies, Disney buying the rights and deciding your story's not good enough, we're going to do a new one and shit all over you. The important question now is though, why is Henry Cavill being replaced? James Gunn and Peter Safran were hired to lead DC Films' TV and animation divisions in October. They would take on the role of co-chairs and co-CEOs of DC Studios a newly formed arm of Warner Brothers set to replace DC Films. So essentially, a guaranteed reboot. Nera was thinking they were going to use Flashpoint as a way of doing it. Which would make some sense, wouldn't it? I assume this is a way to rewrite all previous heroes out and replace them with either a gender-swapped 
alternative or just get rid of them entirely. When it comes to DC, they have floundered of late because they don't know how to write good sequels. They cocked up with Justice League. Less said about Batman, the better, quite frankly. The Batman was very good, but not a part of this, just to be clear. They didn't know what to do with Superman. They never did. They screwed that up monumentally. The sequel to Wonder Woman was beyond levels of cringe that could be considered acceptable. And Black Adam confused me because I was led to believe it was the Doctor Fate Hawkeye movie. A buddy cop thing because no one gives a damn about Kandark or Black Adam. We know this because it's barely made a profit. Something which The Rock has flexed about and I'll mention that properly, talk about it even in This Week at Twitter because something interesting has happened on that front as well. No doubt inspired by James Gunn and Peter Safran. If the intention is to reboot everything, of course I wish them the best. However, how you intend to reboot it and doing so mere weeks after an announcement of return was made by one of the stars is tragic. Now in the case of Henry Cavill, he is highly likely to be James Bond now, which I'll be honest, perfect. If he is cast as James Bond, I'm all for it. He's also starring in an executive producer of a Warhammer 40,000 show tentatively agreed with Amazon. Now I'm on the fence with that, mostly because of the damage done by the Rings of Power. And also, I have yet to see something convincing that would lead me to support it fully. Often in Warhammer 40,000 games, the trailer cinematics are amazing. The cutscene cinematics are amazing. But when it comes to long-form content, let's call it that, Beyond Bruffer Alpha Busa, the movie they did years ago wasn't that good. It really wasn't. But I do hope, since he is such a nerd, he can take it to the next level. It is, though, worth adding the market is a lot smaller than it is with Superman. So taking this to the next level, I'm intrigued to see how he does it. But seriously, you should be Bond as well. Now to finish, I have a video. Whether or not this gets through YouTube's copyright system, who knows? I'm going to title it Botoxic Femininity. And the reason why is because we hear about toxic masculinity all the time. I think it's only right to call out the opposite, yet equally toxic, femininity in the form of Jennifer Lawrence, who really can't stop digging holes. We listened to each other's point of views. Sometimes I was wrong and would learn that I was wrong, and sometimes I was right. <laughs> um, and it was, it was incredible to not be around toxic masculinity, to get a little break from it, and we would always, it, it did always just kind of make us laugh about how we are, you know, how we ended up with the... Um, you know, women shouldn't be in roles like this because we're just so emotional. Don't you just love a little circle jerk echo chamber? It's okay though, there's more. Just a little more. Because when you work with only women, things are perfect, everyone. That That's totally how it goes. And we're just, you know, so, and it's just, I have seen, I mean, I've worked with Brian Singer. I've seen, I've seen emotional men. I've seen, I mean, the biggest hissy fits I've ever seen thrown on set. I've been, I've watched a man. I've, I've worked, she's, I think, my third female director and she's they, they are the uh, calmest uh, best decision makers I've ever worked with I absolutely love working with with female directors now forgive me if I'm wrong here but surely you're calling a man emotional isn't right since you've also alluded to women not being calm yet they are the calmest directors around okay um just because someone is emotional passionate unstable uh, does not give you a right to determine that to be a form of toxicity, which is what you have conflated it with within the two short clips I showed you. It takes a special kind of idiot to continually dig holes and use regurgitated dead arguments. For example, women in certain types of roles. Yes. Oh, and of course, emotional means bad, but the women are calm. It's the men who are emotional. That's also not an argument, by the way. I assume the reason you brought up Brian Singer wasn't because he directed so many X-Men movies, but because of the sexual assault allegations that came out just as he was finishing up with Bohemian Rhapsody. Toxic masculinity, everyone. 